At any minute, this video could descend into chaos because my neighbors are right outside my window about to put up a bunch of solar panels on their roof. Oof, I'm gonna try to make this fast. Fall favorites, yay! I have a lot of stuff I'm really passionate about today. Clothes, perfume, makeup, skincare, candles, all of it. And rather than just talking about stuff I've been loving for the past month, I wanted to talk about my fall essentials. I really tried hard to narrow it down to just two items per category but you know me, that was not possible. I'd like to thank today's sponsor, which is In Beauty Project. They wanted me to help announce that as of October 6th, they're now in all Sephora stores and Sephora and Kohl's locations. You can also find their products on sephora.com. And when I went to my local Sephora, I found In Beauty Project under the next big thing skincare wall, and they had a selection of products like my favorite slushy serum moisturizer. I'll link in the description box a reel and review that I did about that product because it's fantastic. I don't have it with me right now because I actually used it up like very quickly because I loved it so much. But in my Sephora, I also saw they had the pimple paste, the toner, they had the green machine, and I know that the Sephora in Kohl's locations has a little bit wider of a selection. I have a ton of content on In Beauty Project, their lip glazes, their face glaze, slushy, all that stuff. So I'll leave all those videos in the description box below and let's jump in. Okay, I'm gonna get the two clothing items out of the way first. So I'm in the Bay Area and this weekend we have Outside Lands, which is a sort of music, wine and food festival. And it tends to be a little bit wet on the field. In previous years, I know that it gets like very, very rainy and muddy. So my friends told me to buy some rain boots. I lived in LA, so I didn't own any. And these are dope, look at them. They're Chelsea rain boots from J. Crew, but you know, they're rubbery, they're rain boots but when you wear them, they just look like really nice Chelsea boots. So I'll leave it in the description box below. I think they're on sale for like 35 to $50 and the original price was maybe 75. So I got these for super cheap and I'm really excited about them. They're really comfortable. They fit, I would say true to size with a little bit of extra room to be worn with thicker socks. So really, really excited about how cool rain boots can look. In terms of clothing, I just cannot stop wearing Alo Yoga's Sherpa jackets. I have six of them. I know it's excessive, but it's really all I wear. I got a party on top, pajamas on the bottom. So this is the Sherpa trench. And it's just a huge Sherpa jacket that looks like a trench coat. It's so warm, so thick and cozy. They have so many different styles too. So I have this Sherpa trench. This is size small in black. I also have size small in camel. And then I have their Foxy Sherpa jackets, which are kind of like cropped with a big hood. And then I have two more in a different style that I can't remember, but Al Yoga Sherpa jackets the way to go. Next up, I'm gonna breeze through the skincare items. First up, I've got the Youth to the People Super Clay Purifying Clear Power Mask with Niacinamide Kombucha and BHA. When I was in Palm Springs on vacation a few weeks ago, my skin was freaking out, I was breaking out, but it was also really reactive and sensitive, which is a terrible combination. And all of my friends insisted that this mask actually performs and you can see like very clear progress in the before and afters and i bought it very reluctantly this is so tiny and it's 36 dollars for a mask i just felt weird about that but man this is the best clay mask i've ever tried after i use this mask my skin just feels more calm less red it's a bit smoother it looks more just like clean and fresh um, and this obviously has clay, it has niacinamide, it has BHAs. So ingredients that my skin really, really loves. And if you struggle with acne, but you also have really sensitive skin or dry skin, I know it's expensive, but I would give this a shot. It really is the most effective mask I've ever tried. When we went to Palm Springs, we we're only supposed to be there for like three or four days. And we ended up extending our trip to 10 days because we fell so deeply in love with our Airbnb. But I ran out of all of the skincare that I brought. So I picked up this niacinamide serum from the Inky List, and this has been rocking my world. Every niacinamide serum that I've ever purchased before, like from Paula's Choice, a few others, they're always just way too highly concentrated. And my skin just can't tolerate niacinamide. It's only $6.99. It has like hyaluronic acid, panthenol, allantoin, glycerin, basically a ton of ingredients that are hydrating and soothing. 
And niacinamide is also an antioxidant that can help with brightening. So if you don't tolerate vitamin C, definitely try niacinamide. That's what my dermatologist told me. My holy grail skincare product of fall has been the La Roche-Posay Cicoplast Balm B5. This is basically an ointment that's like very thick and white, and it is meant to just soothe the skin. I don't know what it is, but ever since I went to New York in August, my skin has been breaking out in like sensitivity rashes on my cheeks. I've never had it before, but it's clearly an issue with like reactive skin from a damaged skin barrier. And this has been basically the moisturizer I use at night. It's super thick. So when you put it on, it like looks like you have a white cast from sunscreen. Um, but I actually just apply it in thin layers and I find that that does the job and I don't have a white cast. I can kind of just get the coverage that I need. And this is the number one product I would recommend if you struggle with reactive skin or sensitivity. It's just unbeatable. It's like $15. You can get it at Ulta. It's absolutely incredible. Lastly for skincare, you guys, I found the one. It's the Dermatology Physical Tinted Moisturizer SPF 44 Universal Tint. Uh, this is the tinted sunscreen I've been looking for my whole life, basically. It has 10% zinc. It has 5.5% titanium dioxide. It has iron oxides, which protect against blue light and help with hyperpigmentation. One of the things I've struggled with is most tinted sunscreens, like from Elta MD and other brands, are just way too dark and too orange on my skin. It's hard for me to find a tinted sunscreen that's light enough that doesn't have so much coverage that makes it kind of a makeup item. So this tint is perfect for me. I'm wearing it all over my face right now and I do have a little bit of foundation on top, but it is just really the perfect tint for me. I don't think it's a universal tint. Frankly, I think that because this kind of almost filters my skin, I think that it must have actually a bit of coverage if you see on my, my mole, my mole right there. So I don't think it's a universal tint, but they do have a chemical version that I believe is actually universal. And that's like their cult classic sunscreen. But the physical one is incredible because I can't use chemical filters. This is never irritating. It's just this perfect creamy, almost moussey lotion texture. It's not too dewy, but it's not matte. It's really just the perfect sunscreen I've been looking for. And I love that it combines zinc, titanium dioxide, and iron oxides. One of the things I've learned recently is in battling my hyperpigmentation after laser treatments, if I'm not using a tinted sunscreen, I'm actually not preventing as much as I could against brown spots and other hyperpigmentation from forming. I just learned that you really need iron oxides if you struggle with hyperpigmentation. So if you do, make sure that you're using a tinted sunscreen. And ever since I started using this that has more of a tint than most of my other sunscreens, I've been able to keep uh, my dark spots at bay. And so I completely attribute it to this product. Let's move into some makeup, shall we? What I have on my cheeks today is my number one pick for fall. It is the MAC Glow Play Blush in Rosie Does It. As you can see, it does not look as scary as it looks in the pan, but purple blush is apparently going viral on TikTok. So I wanted to show you how dope this is. And I'm gonna add a little bit more with my another favorite, my Phytosurgeon Sky Fluff. And really, you don't need much, it's quite pigmented, but I'll show you how it looks buffed out on the back of my hand. That's how you can um, wear it very sheerly, but you can build it up like that. It would probably be a pretty fun eyeshadow. I don't know, I'm just saying. But really, it just adds a pop of pink on the skin almost, but because it's purple in the pan, it just really brightens the face. And so I've been loving pairing this with some of my more mauve berry lips. And I just feel like it really just wakes up the face, you know, in a way that doesn't scream purple blush. Those cream powder hybrids just make the skin look really airbrushed. Anything too dewy and wet looking or too matte and dry, I find emphasizes texture. I think that really for me, I just need to have that middle ground of this cream powder hybrid. Just use a brush and then you get this super diffused look. And I think this is the best purple blush that money can buy. A recent blush find that has just stolen my heart is the Can Make Cream Cheek in number 16 almond terracotta. So on the flip side, when I don't want a purple blush that's super bright, if I just want something a little neutral, I go for this. I love how tiny this is. It was $7 on, 
on Amazon. You can get like 20 more shades on Yes Style, but their shipping just takes a while. And this color almond terracotta is just a joy, a true terracotta to me. You know, it's quite on the orange side. I was wanting a little bit more brown from it, given the name almond terracotta. But once it's on the cheeks, it is quite terracotta. It just feels so incredibly thin and emollient and spreadable. And then once it's on your hand, you can feel that it must have silicone in it because it has this slip to it, but then it dries down and it just is totally like a cream to powder finish. So easy to apply with fingers or a brush. I love how tiny this is because I can take it with me anywhere. I think I wanna get this shade cinnamon tea next, which is like a true beige. Everyone who's raved about this can make cream cheek formula is right, it's really, really exceptional. Okay, onto highlighters. I was also able to narrow this down to two, so I'm pretty proud of myself. And first up is the In Beauty Project Face Glaze. You'll see that they repackaged this. It used to be in a jar and you would have to unscrew the lid and then take off the sort of like hygiene layer of lid protection, whatever that is called. You just unscrew the cap and squeeze it out. It's perfect. It's a moisturizer mixed with kind of a soft focus blurring effect mixed with a very subtle highlighter. So don't think of the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter. That to me is actually like a highlighting product. To me, I use that as a highlighter over my cheeks and I'm good. This does not have as much of a shine as the Hollywood Flawless Filter does. And that's why I like this. To me, this just really looks like skin once it's on the face. Um, and what's amazing about this is it has vegan squalane, ceramides, which I desperately need for barrier repair. It has kakadu plum, which I think is an antioxidant, watermelon extract, and hyaluronic acid. So this isn't just like, you know, a primer or a highlighter or something. It is packed with really good skincare ingredients. And I'm gonna put some on my face. I don't have any highlighter on. Anything that's shining through is just my skincare or the Glow Play blush. And the texture just feels like kind of a rich cream mixed with like a soft focus highlighter. And I don't typically wear this as a primer under makeup because when I wear makeup, my skin just tends to get very oily in my T-zone. But when I don't wear makeup, my skin tends to be more dry. So I love this when I'm not wearing makeup and I just want my skin to look expensive you know what i mean it just it just looks expensive and i love that in beauty project has very very affordable prices i think their lip glaze is only 15 dollars. i mean really especially for a brand that is sold at sephora i just think that their price point is really really good and I think if you want to use this as a primer, if you want to use it as a moisturizer, as a highlighter, it's definitely a multifunctional product and it just gives you that subtle glow. And I'll blend it out so you can see more realistically what it looks like. But if you were to put it all over your face, your skin just, see, it just looks expensive. Since I've been going for such an airbrushed finish on my face, I obviously had to include the Phytosurgeon Spectral Shine Balm in Divine Daylight. This is their newest shade, and it is just that perfect champagne color that we've all been dying for. Once you get the hang of these, they're really an exceptional highlighter. And my other favorite, of course, is the Phytosurgeon's Sky Buff brush which was created to work with this so i'll put some on my face just swirl it around in the pan you feel like you're not getting anything when you touch it you're like whoa what is this it's like a bomb and it's a powder and then just buff it on your face as the name suggests and you can get a really beautiful glow see compared to the in beauty the in beauty is more subtle more soft focus then you can get more of a kind of higher shine finish from the phytosurgeons, but still on the skin, you can't see anything. You can't see any shimmer, you can't see any glitter. And it's not dewy, cause it's like a powder bomb. So really once you just buff it into the skin, you can get 
again, such a an expensive looking skin finish. I've already mentioned them, but my two brush favorites for fall are the Phytosurgeons brushes. These are exceptional. I mean, I really don't understand how they're putting out products continually that are just flawless. I actually helped name these brushes on Instagram. Phytosurgeons put up pictures of these and was like, help us name the product. And they chose mine as the winner. I had originally said uh, Air Buff and Air Fluff or something like that, but there was a trademark issue. So they went, they went with Sky Buff and Sky Fluff. You don't have to use these just for Phytosurgeons products. I also love the way that the matte white packaging looks and somehow they don't get dirty. Like my, my hands are always disgusting with makeup, but they're not dirty. They look beautiful. So I cannot wait for phytosurgeons to release more brushes. These are just really, really good. Would you believe it? I only have one eyeshadow pick for this entire fall because it's really the only thing I've been wearing. It's on my eyes right now. It's been in a few videos recently and it's the Rimmel Wonder Cloud All Day Wear Soft Shadow. This is in the shade Honey Drop. Spoiler alert, this is the dupe for Nude Sticks Terra and it comes out in a doe foot applicator. It applies the perfect amount of product. It is that amazing kind of orangey, yellowy beige. Feels so smooth. There's a little bit of that silicone slip to it. I don't know if it has silicone, but then you just blend it on your eyes and it stays all day. Somewhat sheer, but buildable. I have only one layer on my eyes today. And I just think it's the perfect color to go with my complexion, my eye color. Really, this is like one of the fastest eyeshadows I've ever used. This is my favorite cream liquid you know kind of eyeshadow formula that i've ever tried rare beauty is now a very close second but i find that these are just a little bit fluffier the rare beauty ones dry down faster because they're a little bit thinner but these are just a little bit fluffier and they're just so blendable so Unfortunately, I've only found these on Amazon, so I'm wondering if they were discontinued, but I will link this below. Just go spend the like seven bucks and get this on Amazon, I'm telling you. It is exceptional and they come in other shades, of course, but this is the one I've been reaching for. I don't know who I am, but I have two eyeshadow palettes that I've been reaching for throughout the entire fall. The first is the M Cosmetics Divine Skies eyeshadow palette in Magic Hour. I've just been loving these colors for more like sunsetty eye. My next video after this one is actually going to be a full glam look using this palette. I think I used like four shadows and a liquid liner, so I really tried to show all of the different colors. But if I just had to pick the ones I love, this one Radiant is so incredibly perfect. Oh. It's just that kind of rose gold tan. And then the mattes blend like a dream. They look gorgeous. All of these as well. I love using this as an inner corner highlighter. Um, the only one I don't use is this kind of like matte peach, but this one as well is really pretty. It reminds me of NARS Orgasm because it's just like a pinky gold. Really, really beautiful shades. The formula is just so creamy and blendable. So I've been loving this one. If you follow me on Instagram, this is no surprise. It's the Flower Beauty Desert Lights eyeshadow palette. And <laughs> look at these shades. Like, are you kidding me? This is so perfect for just year round, not just for fall. Oh my God. It's so creamy and so reflective. It is just wild how pigmented they are. I think today I just might pop a little bit of the gold on my lids just to see what that looks like. I'm only gonna do a tiny, tiny little touch. And I just wanna bring a little light into the eye just so you can see. And they're just so reflective. They look rather foiled too, which is really cool. Now these do have fallout. I don't know, you can see, but I just got some fallout under my eyes, but whatever this is only 17 dollars. it's so good i will leave a link in the description box where you can find my instagram post that has comprehensive swatches in all different lighting so you can really see what this looks like before we move on to the final makeup category of lips let's talk about some candles and perfume both winners of my fall perfume favorites are from diptyque this is called Eau Duel, and it is basically their woody slightly spicy vanilla and it's not just your standard sickly sweet kind of young vanilla. It is sophisticated, it's sexy, it's creamy, it's warm. It's not very sweet. It's just woody, a little spicy. We should do a 
dramatic reading of the fragrance descriptions. Odwell is a vibrant dash of cold spices, cardamom, pink peppercorn, and saffron, and the intoxicating juniper essence hits new heights with fresh cypress, cypress and alemi. I don't know what that is. Alemi aromatic ting tinges. This is too much for me. I can't handle this. I haven't had my coffee yet. Then the vanilla emerges triumphant against the light and dark backdrop. On the one hand, there is ethereal, epicurean, and powdery fernat vanilla. It's enthralling sweetness exalted by a paradism. I go, oh, fuck this. I can't do this anymore. And cardamom, Asian cypress, alemi, juniper, saffron, calamus? Calamus? I don't know. Black tea, black African olibanum, amber, fernat vanilla, bourbon vanilla, and white musk. Okay, so basically it's like a spicy, woody vanilla. You get the idea. Love it. Okay, now Orpheon is my next fragrance pick, and it only comes in this big bottle. Sadly, I like smaller bottles, but this one is just transformative. Like, it really takes me to a place I've never been. Description on the website really sold me on the fragrance in the first place, and it really matches with the way that it smells. Paris in the early 60s. The St. Germain Quarter was alive with the rhythm of all night sessions in jazz clubs and artistic encounters. People would discuss the world, dance and laugh in a warm atmosphere as vibrant as it was elegant. Orpheon was one of the bars filled with joyful effervescence where the three founders of the nearby Diptyque Boutique liked to meet. Today, paying tribute to this era and to creative friendships, the bar is immortalized in the olfactory portrait that bears its name, Orpheon, freeze frame. Curls of tobacco smoke mingle with powdery trails of blusher lingering on burnished wood. At the heart of the composition is the atmosphere of that unforgettable place, recognizable through the warmth of the tonka bean, the depth of cedar, and the vivacity of juniper berries. Oh, is that not so meaty? I totally smell all of that in this little bottle. And it's interesting because this is kind of a powdery scent and I don't like powdery scents, but powdery trails of woman's blusher. Like I smell that like old school makeup, but I don't like that scent ever in makeup, but I smell it. You can smell the tobacco. You can smell the cedar wood. You can smell the juniper that just adds a little bit of like astringent or freshness and it just really transports you to that bar in Paris in the 60s. And this is why I wear this at night when I'm going out and it just like makes me feel special. I put on a fur coat and like a big necklace and I just <laughs> really like it. Okay, next in fragrances, I picked two candle favorites for fall. It was very hard to narrow this one down. My first favorite is by a company called Sweetwater Decor. I first found this brand on Amazon. You can get a lot of their candles on their Amazon store. Um, this is, I think, 11 ounces. Yeah, it's 11 ounces and it's $24. So, you know, for a really high quality soy candle, um, I think $24 is pretty affordable. And this candle, flannel, oh God, it's good. Okay, let me redo the description. Flannel is a soft but bold fragrance, blending the sweet and woodsy notes of fall together perfectly. Imagine being at a bonfire with your best friends, having the time of your life. Vanilla, caramel, cinnamon, amber, tonka, smoky woods, and musk. Make this a one-of-a-kind fall scent. Um, and then the total notes are vanilla bean, almond, caramel, coriander, ginger, bay leaf, clove, cinnamon, leather, amber, tonka, smoky woods, and cashmere musks. And the reason I love this so much is you don't just get all of the sweet, spicy notes, you know? It's it's definitely more complex than that because the smoke and the leather comes through. And while it is still kind of a gourmand candle, like you do for sure get that sweetness, it's just balanced so beautifully by the leather and the smoke. I narrowed it down to one luxury candle favorite and it is Dyad Pins and Needles. First of all, just, just look at the candle. I love the white ceramic vessel. I love the Dyad logo. I think it is just really cool. And then having a black interior is also just really beautiful and really sexy, unisex. And these candles never tunnel. Look at that even burn. I've never burned candles from a company that is that consistently even. And this is $40, so it's a luxury candle, but 
not like Byredo or Diptyque or anything like that. And I think that these are better. So in terms of the scent, this is Pins and Needles. And to me, it just smells like a crisp winter walk. The profile is Green Bay, Pine Cone, Black Current, Pine Needle, Blue Eucalyptus, Balsa Wood, Pine Wood, and Sheer Musk. It's a soy candle. It's vegan and cruelty free. They're hand poured in Los Angeles. And if you didn't know, Dyad is owned by two YouTubers. Their YouTube channel is the Garso Twins. Their names are Britta and Carly. And I'm just blown away by the quality of their candles. But I gotta give you the sort of backstory on why this one won. This is like catnip for my family. I don't know what it is. Every time I burn this candle, someone walks in the room and is like, wow, that smells good. Like people have like a transformative experience with this candle, I'm telling you. And the fact that my family like freaks out about how good this is every time I burn it, I think a lot of people will really love this. Lip products and then we're done. Obviously I didn't pick just two lip products. Like <laughs> I picked seven. Basically they're all berries. I'm just going, going for that basic bitch fall. First up is probably my favorite. It is the In Beauty Lip Glaze in number two berry jam. And this just mm, smells so good. Like a hot berry jam. Formula is amazing. The color's amazing. So is the applicator. This fuzzy, chubby little applicator. And it's just a beautiful color. It's a berry, but it's not too purple. The formula is like a lip oil mixed with a gloss. It's not so thin like lip oils. I hate thin lip products and I don't like lip oils, but I think the name Lip Glaze is very appropriate for this because it adds a really nice amount of shine. It adds just a pop of sheer bright color. It's nourishing, but it's lightweight. This is by far my favorite lip glaze from In Beauty Project. I think they have like six of them now maybe, but this one just has my heart. The color and the scent I think are just phenomenal. My next sort of sheer berry product is the Beauty Pie Wonder Gloss Collagen Lip Oil in Jammy. And I think though this looks darker, I think it's actually more sheer. Yeah. And this one is a little bit more cushiony, a little bit thicker than the In Beauty Lip Glaze. This one smells like just like vanilla cake batter. It's like a hybrid between an oil, a gloss, and a cushiony liquid lip balm. I find that the In Beauty Lip Glaze has more of a shine and a little bit more color. And then the Beauty Pie has a little bit more cushion to it. So it just depends what you're looking for. It wouldn't be fall without my favorite lipstick, which is the Beauty Pie Future Lipstick Lux Shine in bruised berry and i'll show you what it looks like on the back of my hand it is a berry but it definitely has pink to it it's just like my perfect kind of flushed lip color it's just to me that perfect like romantic youthful flushed lip and i just think this formula it's lightweight but it doesn't slide around at all. It's very nourishing. It's a little bit shiny. It never feels drying. It's just a perfect lipstick formula. This is the lipstick formula I've been looking for. And it smells just like the other Beauty Pie lip products, like that kind of vanilla cake batter thing that I love. And it's just such a beautiful color I think would look good on so many people. So this is my lipstick favorite. The lip product I was wearing throughout the whole video was the Charlotte Tilbury Happy Kiss and Pillow Talk. Obviously this had to be here. I'll swatch it next to Bruised Berry and it's just that perfect iconic my lips but better shade it's a little bit darker than bruised berry but i find that i don't really like build it up that much so this is what it looks like mm. the formula is just so incredibly nourishing it's thick cushiony Oh my God, it just feels like a dream. It's like my dream lip formula. I have a whole YouTube video dedicated to the five of these that I bought and a whole review comparison to the M Cosmetics lip cushions, comparison to other colors. So I'll also leave that in the description box below. But as you can see, I'm just really going for these kind of pinky berries or pinky red berries. Pillow Talk is no exception. It's the best Pillow Talk shade that Charlotte Tilbury has. I find that the others 
I think are a little bit too gray. Like they look very dull. This one is more flattering and I've had a lot of people DM me to say that they agree this one's more flattering. And lastly, it wouldn't be a favorites video without talking about Fit Glow Lip Serums, would it? I fell in love with these three shades after doing my whole mega lip swatch video of every Fit Glow Lip Serum. If you haven't seen that, I'll link that one down below too. I have the shades Halo, Full, and Ever. So we have Halo, Full, and Ever. And Halo is just kind of a brownie beige with a hint of gray in it. Um, but in my Fit Glow lip swatch video, I also saw that it had a little bit of pink in it too. So I find that it's not too gray. It doesn't make me look like sick. It just kind of is a really cool shade. And then full is much more of like uh, a neutral chocolate brown. It has maybe a touch of mauve in it. I just find that full is like that sexy brown shade that makes you feel really like cool girl. And then ever really surprised me because it looks really purple on my hand, but on the lips, mixed with the slight pink of my lips, it just becomes the perfect berry. So let me apply a halo. Halo is that beige, beigey brown with a hint of gray. Halo is just a good color when you want to throw on a nude and like not really think about it. Um, it just, that touch of gray, I think adds something a little bit different than like a standard pinky beige or something like that. So really been into this one. This is the shade full and Full is much more, sorry, there are people outside my window that are staring at me and I'm like, oh, I'm applying lip gloss. Anyways, full is such a sexy shade. It's a brown and I just think it's really flattering. And I don't typically go for browns, but like, I think I like it. Again, I just feel cool and sophisticated when I wear this. This one got a lot of love on my video and on my Instagram swatches. People were like, full is it. So really been into this one, especially if I'm like going out at night. Lastly, we have Ever, which is that sort of purple berry, but you'll see it goes on purple, but when it mixes with your lip color, it is just beautiful. So I would leave it here. I wouldn't add a second layer. Um, I just think that it looks like a really perfect berry. If you wanted to build it up, you can, as you can with most Fit Glow lip serums. So I could certainly go for a little bit more of a bold look like that, but I just think that this is a really great, great color for fall. And that reminds me, I completely forgot to bring my nail polish up because that's a favorite as well. Final favorite of the video is this nail polish. It's by Olive and June and it's in the shade JJ. And I just think it's the perfect chocolate shade. I always get compliments on this color when I wear it because it's dark for fall and winter, but it's not like OPI Lincoln Park after dark, dark. It's still like dark, but neutral. And it's not too brown. There's like a little bit of maybe like mauve in there. It's just a really, really perfect shade for fall. So Olive and June JJ is like all I've been wearing. I don't know how to show off nail polish other than doing the claw. Like, what am I doing? Anyways, I hope that you enjoyed this assortment of fall favorites. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Thanks to In Beauty for partially sponsoring this video. Definitely check them out in Sephora stores and Sephora in Kohl's locations. As always, if you made it this far, thanks for watching. I hope you'll subscribe and I'll see you next time.